Nobody better to kick off this virtual docu-series than one of the few people who were part of Dancing with Our Stars for each of its 10 seasons. She participated in the inaugural event and then became one of its hosts for the remaining nine years. A news anchor from WBAY-TV2, Cammie Rapson, welcome to the first edition <laughs> <laughs> of the DWOS Diaries. No pressure at all, right? No pressure at all, but thank you for asking. I was, uh, I was honored to be included in this. Um, as I was just telling you right before we started recording, it's been a long time. And so, uh, but I do have some pretty fond memories of those, those that early, the, the early days and the very first year and really seeing it grow over the last 10 years um, of this was pretty amazing. It really was. I mean, I had a front row seed of seeing how it started and seeing what it turned into and it was pretty impressive. Well let's start off going back to 2008 because that's when the whole concept came about. Of course mm -hmm. you you didn't dance until 2009 but as as we know DWOS is a, is a multi-month uh, and sometimes a full year type of a campaign. So take me back to 2008. How did you first hear about the concept of, of this idea and when were you approached? So I remember being approached by my then general manager, Don Carmichael, and he must have had a meeting with Janet Golnick at the time and folks from um, the Red Cross. And he came down to me and to Bill Jarts at the time and said, hey, um, the Red Cross is thinking about this, this fundraiser kind of off the... Um, Dancing with the Stars, um, you would learn to ballroom dance, um, they pair you with someone, you'd raise, raise money, and you know, it's kind of a new concept, they're not sure what it's going to turn into, um, but you know, would you do it? And Bill was like, no way. <laughs> Bill, I love Bill, and he's awesome, but he was like, I am not dancing. He's like, I'll host it. So I remember thinking, okay, well, I don't want to be the only one from the station doing this. So I actually, I remember talking to George Graffis about it, our weather, um, weather man at the time, meteorologist at the time, and, um, and George was like, I'm in. I'm absolutely in. So, um, so yeah, that's how it started. I mean, it was just kind of one of these things like, yeah, they've been thinking about this. They thought it would be a good idea, kind of playing off the popularity of Dancing with Our Stars on ABC and since we're the ABC station. And yeah, and we need a couple of people to do it. And so Bill hosted and George danced and I danced that very first year. You're busy, you're busy, obviously, with your schedule as the evening anchor at WBAY. When, when did you find time to take your dance lessons and what was that whole experience like? Yeah, so it was actually Janet Golnick with um, Dance Sport um, was the original the original dance studio that we worked with, um, and I would go in in the mornings or right before work. Um, so I would I work two to ten, so I would usually dance. Um, so I needed I needed to dance with somebody who had a flexible schedule. Um, George, I think, went in. Um, in the mornings as well, because sometimes we would overlap. Um, and and so I, I, a couple of times a week, I think they actually set it up at the time. It was, and it's kind of funny to think how they thought of it. They're like, okay, you'll, you'll get 10 lessons, you know, or 10 hours of dance. There was some parameter around it. Like you would get this amount of time and then you'll do your dance. And I mean, that was like blown out the window within the first three weeks because number one, I couldn't dance, um, you know, so that was like starting from, you know, below scratch. It was like, okay, this is what these things are. are. This is how you move. Um, so those hours were quickly used up. And um, so I think it, I would go maybe twice a week um, for, and it came up quickly. I want to say, I don't remember the timing of it at all, but I want to say we had probably less than two months before, um, we actually went from, because it was definitely, it was definitely in January, and I, I don't know when that first date was, February, late February maybe? You're really taxing my brain there, but it was, it was a short period of time, definitely less than eight weeks, and so we, we did a couple of lessons a week, and I think that final, final couple of weeks, we did like three or four. It was, it was crutched. We were definitely crutched. And you only did one dance? No, we did two. You did do two. Yes. Off the bat. Okay. So we did. Uh, yeah. So we did a ballroom and a rhythm. 
And, um, <laughs> and, and I definitely, um, and, and this is the, the beauty of watching this progress. Um, I, I think I was on the wrong foot for ballroom like the entire time. Even the night of the dance, I think I did the tango and I think I started off on the wrong foot. I mean, it just, you know, didn't quite click with me. Um, but I then like watching it progress and how people did their dances. I mean, our dance was pretty simple. Um, and, but watching it over the, you know, course of 10, 12 years and what it became, it was just, it was pretty, pretty impressive. So how did you go about picking uh, the dances that you would do, the songs, and I guess mm -hmm. the theme for the performances? So my partner was Michael, um, Michael Witte at the time, and um, Janet um, was um, training Michael. And and so Janet, I did my first couple of lessons with Janet. And so I think she, she evaluated me quickly. We need something fairly simple for her. And so, um, she picked the tango and she picked the music for the tango. I think there was like certain, you know, certain songs. Um, and I can't even remember what my tango music was, but it was a common tango theme. And um, so we did that. And then my second dance was swing. And, um, and I had a little bit more leeway in that. And I played several songs. Um, I then pulled in, um, some of my favorite 80s rock and uh, and did Journey, um, a song with Journey. Um, and that was a blast and there's the picture. <laughs> and I think that was that was probably the secret weapon was the wig and the get up. I think that's that's really what made it kind of fun for us is that we kind of pulled the whole 80s theme in um, with that song from Journey and when we did the swing. I did, that was, that was fun. The tango, I didn't do so well, but I feel like, you know, I kind of nailed the 80s thing since I lived through it the first time. <laughs> this will always be one of my favorite pictures. Uh, <laughs> I attended every event except for the first one, so I didn't get to see yeah. it in person, but when I saw this photo, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> I think I borrowed the the wig that Michael had from a friend um, that who had it from a costume, like a, a '80s um, Halloween costume, and what? And, and I don't think he was going to do it at first. Then when he put it on, it was just like too great. It was just too great. So yeah, it was definitely um, it definitely was uh, set the scene for that dance, and it was so funny because. Um, the very first year we were at Riverside Ballroom. So Riverside is awesome, of course. And, you know, they're known for their chicken. And um, they would, they were, I remember it vividly, you know, there were chick, there was bowls of chicken and bowls of mashed potatoes and bowls of coleslaw on carts. And as we were dancing, we could see the carts like moving through. Um, I think there were, there were 500 people that first year. They sold, um, they sold tables of 10 and I think there were um, 50, 50 tables there and they were serving chicken. And I re it was just, we just laughed about it afterwards. We're like, we were dodging carts of chicken to do those dances because that, I mean, nobody knew. I mean, I remember them saying, you know, we don't know what we're going to get. We don't know if we're going to sell out, you know, we're just going to try this, you know, and see what sticks. And it sold out. And, and I think they were super surprised at that point. Um, and, and it was just such a reaction, you know, between the chicken and it was just, it was, it was special. That very first year was pretty special. Well, clearly the Red Cross knew that it was onto something good. And oh, for sure. they wanted you to continue to be a part of it. So then how did you, was that just kind of a natural transition right away? You, you take part in the first year and all right, Cammie, we want you to, uh, to be one of the co-hosts. I think I selfishly didn't want to give it up. Um, I'm, I'm, in fact, I know selfishly I didn't want to give it up because it was such a fun thing. It really, it always was from year one to, to, to let ended. It was the event that you just had to go to. If you wanted to do a charity event and you wanted to have a blast, that was where you needed to be. And so I just, I didn't want to give it up. I love to see it. And you know, for years, um, people from WBAY took part. Um, Chris and uh, Roth and Sarah Thompson and Catherine Bracho and Tammy Elliott. Um, I mean, just 
so there was always somebody there that you knew and you loved. Um, so it was always really, really fun to see. I can't see that one very well. So tell me who I'm looking at. Is that George? No, it's that Chris. Was, that's Chris, uh, yes. Man of La Mancha. So do you, yes. you remember? Do you remember that performance? And if you do, uh, what do you remember from it? <laughs> I remember he was super excited about it too. I so I think he did it the second year. He was. And, yeah, he was 2010. Uh, yeah, so he did it the second year. He and Sarah, I think, did it that yep. year. And he was so excited about it. I remember vividly him practicing his ballroom steps in the newsroom. And um, and he was a natural. He was really, really good. He's a showman. Um, I don't know if many people know, but his brother is an actor in Hollywood um, and has done, you know, parts in movies and TV shows. And Chris has it. I mean, he has the the bug he is a performer and uh as you can see yeah he was really really good in that so i and i think he had the beard and everything or he had some something going on with his face with that it was yeah, go really, really fun. yeah yes yeah so it was fun we that was he was great to watch in that really great to watch well another uh which was the final year so yeah years two three four five were at the radisson yeah. And the final year at the Radisson was my first year with the American Red Cross mm -hmm. and having the ability to, uh, to be the producer of the event. And uh, certainly, uh, I would say that uh, these two stole the show uh, in 2013. That would be Bettina and Donald Driver. Oh. So any, any memories that you have uh, from those two taking part in the event and just you know, really how, how, it, how it elevated it to another level? Oh, did it ever. I remember um, hearing rumors about this. So this was after Donald won Dancing with the Stars, correct? If I'm remembering this correctly, he had, he had just won. And, um, and when I had heard rumors that Bettina was going to take part, and I'm like, there is no way. There's no way, like, like, you know, even though it was a, you know, a well attended event and a well thought of event, I just thought, no way. And then it happened. And so that was kudos to you and to the uh, Red Cross team, because I was like, what? what? That was incredible. And for him to dance with her and just, yeah, they were, they were amazing. That was, that, that really took it up a notch. That was pretty darn cool. And then it just got better and better from there. That's what I say when I think about those early days and dodging the carts to, to seeing Peta and, and Donald and Bettina and just some of the dances that you, you, that your stars pulled off and the costumes. It was it, really, I mean, I was a front row seat to being like, and the amount of money, of course, that you raised. I think that first year we might have raised uh five ten thousand dollars or something i don't even know maybe and then it just you know boom 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 it was it was absolutely astonishing so yeah that that after that final year at the radisson we had outgrown it uh, yeah. it was a great venue at the time but we we knew that we needed to go somewhere larger so we did the ki convention center in the uh -huh. lower ballroom and that was 2014 famously the the Jim Ribbit year where he raises a record $200,000 and that whole team does half a million bucks. So, you know, when you hear those numbers, again, I know you just kind of said astonishing, but just some thoughts on Jim and that whole team from 2014. That was, that took it up a notch. I mean, the, the camaraderie that I saw um, just from that night alone. Um, just the kind of playfulness and the people, you know, I remember I think talking with you, you're like, okay, I, this is what is happening. This is how much they've raised, but he doesn't know and they don't know. And, and so we're kind of gonna just, you know, play this up a little bit, but it was the numbers that you were talking about was, were just crazy for one person, let alone, um, you know, a team to then top that. Um, but I remember seeing that year some of the fundraisers that they did. And I think, did Jim not do the, the disco ball that I'm thinking he did a 70s kind of, uh, yeah, fundraiser? Yep, they, they call it the, the mirror ball. Yes, yes, yeah. So it was, it was over. I mean, I remember seeing pictures thinking that was over and beyond and above 
that was a that, that was a fundraiser, you know, in itself. I mean, that was like the the appetizer to the actual competition. Um, but you know, it really wasn't a competition. I mean, people were just that team. That team that year was just you. You had something really magical there. Then we eventually moved to the grand ballroom, the new grand ballroom mm -hmm. upstairs. And I, I feel uh, aesthetically that that was the best of all the venues because uh, it was an actual ballroom. No offense mm -hmm. to uh, the lower room at the convention center, but that's it's a convention space. And the upper ballroom was just more intimate, but you could still seat a lot of people. And obviously uh, we had one heck of a, of a send off in 2018 with the finale and we bring PETA back, but she also brings her husband. So Max brought a new dynamic. What, what did you think of Max? And then of course, PETA coming back. <laughs> well, I, I, that was crazy. I mean, really, I mean, cause you see them, you saw them on dancing with the stars on ABC. I mean, just so above and beyond any sort of like talent and i remember you gave PETA the key to the city not that year but i think maybe the year prior or in uh, her before. first year in 2014. Yeah, okay yeah and so like kind of bribing her come on back come on back come on back and she loved it i mean so obviously the red cross was doing something right and something magical and pure that she did want to be part of and bring her you know famous you know, dancing husband with, with her. And so that was, that was, that was such a wonderful cap to all of this. I mean, it really was. It, it's again, hard for me to look back on those first years and then see what it had become. And, um, and yeah, and how do you top it year after year after year? But am amazingly you did. So it's sad to see it gone. It really is. But, uh, but it was such a wonderful, wonderful time. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to stroll down memory lane with us yeah. and kick off the DWOS Diaries. So, Cami Rapson, uh, a final bow. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I've hung up my dancing shoes. Like I said, I, uh, I wasn't nearly as good as some of the people that you had in those, uh, in those later years. They were just really oh, 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 so wonderful, so talented, and, uh, and great fundraisers, too. So it was fun to be a part of, and I, I was honored to be a part of it. Well, we were glad to have you, and again, glad to have you on this virtue docu-series here <laughs> as uh, we all deal with social distancing. Thanks again, Cammie. <laughs> nice to see you. You too. Bye-bye.